The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. I am the Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Rated by independent research, the most popular West Coast program in radio history. And Signal Gasoline is tops, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly, dealer-owned Signal service stations from Canada to Mexico. And now, the Whistler's strange story. Fateful Friday. Friday, May 16th seemed like any one of the 512 Fridays Mr. Brown had spent as an employee of Crandall and Ames, certified public accountant. With a morning ride to his office on the crowded subway, deadly hours over an adding machine, interrupted only by the usual cheese on rye and glass of milk in the company cafeteria. The ride down from the 40th floor of the Crandall building in the crowded elevator at three minutes past five after his work was over, and the usual Friday remarks to his fellow employee. Night, Brown. Night, George. Have a nice weekend. Same to you. See you Monday, Frank. Yeah, another day, another dollar. <laughs> Same floor. Good night, Steve. Say hello to your family. And as usual on Fridays, Mr. Brown, you weave through the crowd in the lobby to the door of the gourmet, a rather elegant tobacco, liquor, and food shop. A glittering storehouse of delicacies, of fine wines and good living. Ah, oh, good evening, Mr. Brown. Good evening, Elsie. Glad you stopped in tonight. I was going to call your office. We've just got a shipment of French champagne, Veuve Clicquot. Oh, Veuve Clicquot, good. What vintage? 1929. Mm, 1929, not bad. But there are better vintages, Elsie. 1921, that's the vintage I'm looking for. Um... You let me know, of course. Of course, Mr. Brown. Now, uh, here's something you've asked about. A jar of that very fine caviar. Yes, let's see it. Mm. Elsie, encased within every one of these tiny eggs is a paradise of exquisite flavor. Ah, uh, yes. Here we really have something. Uh, uh, just uh, hold that for the time being. Certainly, Mr. Brown. And uh, here are some of those clear Havanas that just came in. Two dollars special. Yes, I see. Tell you what, Elsie. Just for tonight, why, why don't, don't you give me a couple of those two <laughs> for 15 cent tampas? <laughs> uh, those things you say, Mr. Brown, like uh, there was too much rain in 1929 for good champagne and so on. Are they true? <laughs> Any true connoisseur knows there were 27 inches of rain that year. Too much for good champagne. But I don't understand how somebody like you, I mean... You mean, why does a man who earns $45 a week bother to learn about things he'll never be able to afford? I don't know, Elsie. But doesn't it make you unhappy, knowing and not having? I'm going to have it someday, Elsie. You know... Someone said a man can have anything he wants if he wants it bad enough. And I do. Yes, that's the cross you bear, isn't it, Mr. Brown? Trying to reconcile the appetites of a gourmet with a bookkeeper's budget. 
With a drab bachelor apartment you come home to after a stifling ride on the subway. And yet, dull as it seems, this Friday is a remarkable one. Set apart in a curious way from all the other Fridays in your uneventful little life. As the kind of a day that will prove exciting things can happen even to people like you. As you walk into your apartment building, you have no way of knowing, of course, that in reaching into your mailbox in the lobby, you're putting your hand on something that will change your whole life. A moment later, you toss your hat on the table in the living room, slit open the largest and fattest of the envelopes in your mailbox. It's then that you see it and clutch the table for support as a cascade of currency pours out onto the floor. Then find yourself on your knees, staring at it, feeling it and counting. Thousand, two, five, seven. You go on counting, piling it up. Eighteen thousand, thirty. And then a scribbled note. Here is the forty grand. Good luck, Mike. (gasps) Forty... Forty thousand. But where did it... In my mailbox? You study the envelope. There are no stamps, no return address. Someone obviously dropped the money in your box by mistake. You shove the money aside, leave your apartment, and go back to the lobby, trying to make sense out of it, knowing the money can't belong to you. The answer is there waiting for you on the row of mailboxes particularly on the card on the end with a newly penciled notation over apartment 12. Another William Brown. You stand there a moment, staring blankly at the card. Then, without quite knowing why, you find yourself walking upstairs, on up to apartment 12, just above yours. And even as you ring the buzzer, something inside is telling you of the doors that money could open, of the new world waiting for you if you had the nerve, of how easy it would be with $40,000 in cash, unmarked, with no strings attached. Yeah? Who is it? Who is it? What do you want? Uh, excuse me, I'm afraid I have the wrong apartment. Well, the voice inside was a telling one, wasn't it, Mr. Brown? You've made your decision now, and you know there's only one way to go from here on. You forget about dinner, sit alone in your apartment for the next two hours looking at the money, wondering what you're going to say when the man upstairs starts asking questions. Your first impulse is to move out of the apartment, but you decide it's best for the moment to stay, to go on as usual as if nothing had happened to give the man upstairs as little reason as possible to suspect you. And then, just after 8 o'clock... Oh. Uh, just a minute. Uh, Yes? Uh, Mr. Brown? That's right. Uh, Sorry to bother you. My name's Brown, too. I just moved in a few days ago. Oh? I, uh was worried that you might be inconvenienced. That's quite a coincidence, you know. What do you mean? It seems there's not only two Browns in the building. There's two William Browns, too. We got the same first name. Well, that is odd. (laughs) Uh, You know, I uh, got a bunch of noisy friends. I hope they haven't been disturbing you, coming here by mistake. Oh, no. And as a matter of fact, until the mailman gets onto it, I'm liable to get some of your mail and uh, uh, vice versa. It hasn't happened so far. I wouldn't let it bother me if I were you. I see. You know, uh, once in a while I get something kind of important, uh, business stuff and all. I wouldn't want to see anybody make a mistake. Oh, no. You know, a little thing like that can be pretty serious sometimes. What with the postal authorities and all. Now, see here, are you implying that no, I no, might... No, 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 don't get me wrong. Just thought a friend of mine might have got mixed up. You know how it is. I'm expecting an important envelope from him. Uh, Just forget it, Mr. Brown. Good night. Good night, Mr. Uh, Brown. Forty thousand dollars. With the pro. 
prologue of Fateful Friday, the Signal Oil Company is bringing you another strange story by The Whistler. But now a tip to you drivers. Here's a way you can be sure you're picking the gasoline that'll get top performance from your car, the gasoline that's tops in quality. Just remember these two points. One, in gasoline, it takes extra quality to go farther. And two, signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. Consider the facts. The only way any gasoline can put more thrilling performance into your car is by helping your motor run more efficiently. And when your motor runs more efficiently, naturally you get better mileage. So mileage is really the best yardstick of gasoline quality. That's why Signal's good mileage is so important to you. And it's why throughout the West, from Canada to Mexico, more and more drivers every day are filling up with Signal at those friendly, dealer-owned Signal stations. After all, remember those two points. One, in gasoline, it takes extra quality to go farther. And two, Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now back to the Whistler. Yes, it was a fateful Friday, wasn't it, Mr. Brown? The simple mistake at the apartment house mailboxes that placed $40,000 in your hands. But there's a string attached to it. Yes, the small matter of the rightful owner of the money. The other Mr. William Brown, upstairs in apartment 12. Your first impulse was to run away, wasn't it, Mr. Brown? Until you began to think how the man upstairs might begin putting things together. And there was something about him that told you he was not the kind to take this lying down. But there are a few things you can do. One of them, of course, is to call at the little gourmet shop first thing Monday morning. Ah, good day, Mr. Brown. Good day, Elsie. What can I do for you? Perhaps a case of that very fine brandy you're so fond of. Let me see a bottle. Of course, sir. Here you are. Mmm, excellent. Good district. Exactly the right age. Tell you what, Elsie, I think we'll open this bottle right here. Mr. Brown! Mind if I borrow this corkscrew? Thank Mr. you. Mr. Brown, what? Don't open that bottle. Now, two glasses, please. Brandy snifters, of course. If anyone should see us, Mr. Brown, I'll I... I'll pour, Elsie. You and I are going to sample this. There. Votre bon santé. That's French for your very good health. Delicious, Elsie. First rate. Perfection. But, but Mr. Brown, that bottle cost nineteen ninety five. Indeed, very reasonable. At that rate, Elsie, I believe I'll take a case. What? Have it delivered C O D, will you? You know the address. Ah, uh, that does it. Well, that takes care of all the measurements. Thank you, Herman. Uh, Herman's our best tailor. Now, don't go away, Herman. We may want something else. Ah, it's a beautiful suit, Mr. Brown. The newest thing out. <clears throat> and that uh, pinstripe uh, gives you height. Oh, yes. Yes, it does. Yes, yeah. we can have it ready for you on, uh, say, uh, Wednesday. That'll do. Uh, fine. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, I'll help you into the other things. No, wait. I'm not through. I'd also like something in the tweed and perhaps cashmere. Oh, uh, of course, Mr. Brown. Uh, yeah, sit right down, sir. <laughs> I'll bring some things out. Our very best. Uh, I'll just be a moment. Uh, take your time. Is uh, this today's paper? Yes, the noon edition. Ah, the things that are going on in this town. Look at that headline. $40,000 held key in highway shooting. <gasps> What's this? I knew the fellow that got shot, Mike McKee, and I made a suit for him once. What, uh, what sort of business was he in? Oh, you know... What kind aren't they in the crowd that Mike ran around with had a string on all the rackets? I see. But look how they end up, with a bullet in the back. Uh, yes. It says here he was alive when the police found him. Mm-hmm. Died, though, before he could tell him enough. Just something about 40 grand he delivered to somebody. Only the other fellow claimed he never got it and shot him. Terrible, isn't it? People like that running around loose, you never know. Uh, here we are, Mr. Brown. Everything you'd ever want to choose from. 
Imported tweed, cashmere. Uh, look, uh, some other time. Uh, but you I that. know. I forgot there's something I have to do. Uh, just alter this first suit and send it out. I'll be back. Well, you know best. Yes, Mr. Brown, you do know best. Because there isn't any question in your mind that the shooting of Mike McKeon, described in the papers, is directly related to your $40,000. It's strange, isn't it? How you've come to look upon the money as yours now. How you resent the strings attached to it. The man in the apartment above you. The struggle that must have taken place when Mike McKeon was shot. But you've long since decided that it isn't going to do them any good. If the trail leads back to you, you're going to have an answer to their question. But one false step always requires another, doesn't it, Mr. Brown? And that's why, shortly after leaving the clothing store, you find yourself talking to a shoddy little man in an equally shoddy shop on the Lower East Side. And just what kind of a gun did you have in mind, uh, shoddy? Oh, I don't know. Something small, compact, an automatic, perhaps. Hmm. Uh, uh, what about the one in the case here on the end? 32? Nice little automatic. Dependable. Well, that ought to do. Let's see it. Uh, here it is. Oh, here you are. Second hand, of course, but uh, it's a good buy. It's fine. I'll take it. Mm, just like that, huh? Okay, well, let's see now. Uh, I'm supposed to write your name down there. Uh, what is it, huh? Why, uh, C.J. Uh, Wilson. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, that'll be 25 hours, uh, Mr. C.J. Uh, uh, Wilson. <laughs> 20 for the gun and 5 for not asking questions. And there's something else, isn't there, Mr. Brown? Even with this new protection, the incident in the newspapers tells you that now you've got to move out of the apartment, no matter what suspicions it might arouse. And late that night, you slip into the apartment building, hurry down the corridor to let yourself in. You're about to put the key in the lock when... Hello, Mr. Brown. Huh? Oh, it's... Mr. Brown, that's right. I, uh, am waiting for you. Oh? I thought we ought to have another little chat. No, but it's so late, I don't see why whatever it is can't wait it until... can't wait at all, Mr. Brown. Come on. Well, where are we going? Upstairs. We can talk much better in my apartment. Now, look, Mr. Brown, there's no point in our going round and round about this. Like I said, I made one mistake. I don't want to make another. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about at all. Well, the most important thing I'm talking about is $40,000. That's quite a sum. Isn't it? Yeah, a man could do quite a bit on 40 G's. Buy things, travel. That's what I intended to do. I, uh, sort of need to travel, Mr. Brown. Your, uh, health? My, uh, health. Too bad. Yeah. You know, Mr. Brown, you're good. Really good. I don't understand. Oh, yes, you do. It's as simple as those two names in the mailboxes downstairs. Remember, I said I might get some things intended for you. Oh, yes, and I might... Get some things intended for me. Now, how about it? Want to give it back? <laughs> you know, this doesn't make sense. Why, I never knew there was that much money in the world. Until last Friday, then you found out different, huh? I didn't find out anything. You say you made a mistake. You're making another one accusing me. I'm only accusing of... you of being human, Mr. Brown. You know, with the little weaknesses all of us have... I'd have done the same thing you did. I didn't do anything. Skip it. I just had to be sure this time, that's all. Mike McKean was right when he told me he put the money in the mailbox. I made a mistake with Mike, but I won't make a mistake with you. Because I... Well, you're full of surprises, aren't you? Even bought yourself a gun. It's loaded. I'm sure of it. And I, I'm not afraid to use it. Not now, a... there, I'm not so sure. Let's be reasonable about this, Mr. Brown. Uh, don't come near me. I'll shoot. We'll write off what you've spent so far. Don't come near me. Now, let's have the gun like a good lady. I said I'd do it. I told you I'd do it. (laughs) 
Yes, Mr. Brown. In that moment, you found that you'd do anything to keep your $40,000, even kill a man. The thought brings your mind up short, and then impulse starts you toward the door, and the blood pounds in your head as you make your way to your own apartment. Open the door and get inside. Oh, oh Lord. hope nobody saw me. Bed. Get into bed. That's where I should be. Uh, 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 yes? I'm sorry to disturb you so early in the morning, Mr. Brown. Oh, oh, oh. This is Mr. Simpkins, the manager. I wonder if you could come down to my office right away. Your office? But I'm not dressed. It's uh, really very important. All right. I'll come down. I don't know what to tell you, Lieutenant. This Brown who was killed was beyond me. I never knew what he did or what his business was. Uh, just a minute. Good morning. Oh, oh, this is the other William Brown, Lieutenant. Hello. How do you do? Something wrong? I'd say so. Uh, you a pretty sound sleeper, Mr. Brown? What? Oh, I'm sorry. I hear I... anything unusual last night? Why, well, I don't know. I uh... Uh, About 11 o'clock. Well, I was in bed, of course. Uh... Oh, you said 11. Oh, that's right. 11. Yes, I, I remember. I looked at the clock. I I heard a door slam upstairs and somebody running past my door. Mm -hmm. Is that all? Uh, yes, that's all. I thought it was probably one of Mr. Brown's friends. Uh, what do you know about Mr. Brown's friends? He uh, came to me the other day. He said he hoped his visitors wouldn't get our names confused. He he, he told me he uh, had a lot of noisy friends. He uh, had indeed. Uh, any particular reason why you use the past tense there? Why, why, no. What's the matter? What about it, Mr. Simpkins? Well, uh, no. Not this, Mr. Brown. He couldn't have done it. Okay. See, here, I wish you'd tell me. Sorry, Mr. Brown. I just had to make sure. Your friend upstairs was murdered last night. Murdered? But why would anyone kill Mr. Brown? His name wasn't Brown. It was Marco. Victor Marco. He was in the kind of business where people do get killed from time to time. Uh, you understand, Lieutenant. I had no way of knowing when I let him have the apartment. Yeah, he came here to hide out, of course. That's a revenge job, and I think I can put my finger on the guy who did it, if the thing is kept quiet. That means neither of you say anything to anybody about this until you see it in the papers. Is that clear? Uh, yes, Lieutenant. Oh, I yes, understand. Yes, of course. Okay. Thanks to both of you. And Mr. Brown. Uh, yes? I'm sorry I was a little short with you. Oh, that's quite all right. However, Mr. Simpkins, with this sort of thing going on here, I, I'm afraid I'll have to move. I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Brown. I don't blame him. If it was me, I'd leave, too. And I wouldn't stop with this apartment, either. I'd leave the whole darn town flat. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, a message especially for you drivers who have new cars or expect to be getting one. Just any motor oil won't do, you know, for today's high-efficiency motors. No, sir. They need special protection against corrosion, wear, and carbon if they're to give you the long, trouble-free service you have a right to expect. That's why Signal has brought out a new and finer motor oil, especially created to give modern motors this extra protection. Signal Premium Motor Oil. Of course, it has 100% pure paraffin base, but in addition... Signal Premium contains five scientific new compounds. The result? Motors actually stay six times cleaner. Cylinder wear is reduced one-third with Signal Premium motor oil. So if you want to keep the performance of your car young, make your next oil change a change for the better. Switch to the new type Signal oil. That's your guarantee of a sweeter running motor. Signal Premium motor oil. And now, back to the Whistler.
It's hard to believe, isn't it, Mr. Brown? Four days ago, you were a nobody. A dull little molecule in the tide of humanity that surges in and out of town at commuting hours. Today, you're important. A man of wealth. And somehow the fact that you've murdered a man to get there doesn't matter anymore. On the morning after your talk with the police lieutenant, you're packing your things, making ready to leave when... Oh, oh must be some of the things I ordered or the moving people. Yes? Mr. Brown? Yes? Hope you don't mind the intrusion, Mr. Brown. Now, see here. Now, well, what do you want? I'm sure. Mike McCain's friend, you've heard of me. Victor? Victor? Yeah. What are you talking about? I'm not Victor. You've made a mistake. You made the mistake, Victor, out there on the highway. What highway? Listen, I tell you, my name's Brown. I don't know anything about... Shut you. up. I... Mike McCann was a nice guy, Victor. Mike said he delivered that dough. I know he did. You got it. Oh, look, I, I tell you, I'm not Victor. Look, uh, look at this apartment. Does, does it look like I have money? Wait a minute. Boys told me Victor was living here under the name of William Brown. He he, he was upstairs. There, there were two William Browns. Here, 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 here's my business card. W.T. Brown, Crandall and Ames. I, I haven't any money. I, I'm just a clerk there. I make 45 a week. Two William Browns. Listen, are you on the level? Yes. I, I tell you, the other William Brown, the, the one upstairs, was just... Stay right there. I'll get it. Here's your brandy, Mr. Brown. Gourmet shop. Sign right here. You got the wrong... Hold it. Uh, how much is that? $230 easy. Here's your soup, Mr. Brown. Wednesday morning right on the nose. They're holding the tweed and cashmere for you. But I... A COD, $118 on this one. I'm sorry, boys. Mr. Brown can't take care of it right now. Uh, try tomorrow, huh? But Mr. Brown insists that... Well, this is COD, way. too. We can't make another trip just for... Skip it. No money, huh? Just a poor working stiff. They tell me you always did live well, Victor. Fancy suits, brandy by the case. You... You'll never get away with it. Yeah, yeah, I know. They'll pick me up, all right. But one more is not going to make any difference. Except to my friend, Mike McKeon. Yeah. Yeah, to Mike, it'll make a lot of difference. So long, Victor. This time your expensive taste caught up with you. Let that whistle be your signal for the signal oil program, The Whistler. Each Monday at this same time, brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you, to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Herb Butterfield and Jack Moyle. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with music by Wilbur Hatch and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>